to be in this studio with you again because today we'll be creating this fun, colourful, happy looking, comfy old chair. It's painted in acrylic and I don't really know what genre it falls into, but it's a lot of fun. So how about I show you the steps that I took to create it. So let's get into it. So I've downloaded the PDF and I've printed out 12 of these wallpaper sheets to my home printer and I've cut off the excess. Now we need to apply our wallpaper to the canvas for a background and we can do that with Montmartre PVA craft glue and I'm going to apply it with a number six long handle gesso brush. So let's get this glue on. If you're not lucky enough to own a easel like the MEA 0002C Studio Easel, you can lay it on the floor and do it like that. Squeeze out enough glue so you have a nice thick layer, but be careful not to lay down too much. Once you are happy, then you can evenly spread it over the canvas. Only cover as much of the canvas that you need to. It's a good idea to lay the sheets down first with no glue to check this. The gesso brush is quite stiff, so it spreads out the thick glue well. Just get it on as evenly as you can with no bumps. Once the glue is evenly dispersed, you can start to lay up your wallpaper printouts. Tile them systematically from left to right. You could use real wallpaper if you like also. Hey, imagine if you used the same wallpaper on your painting as on your wall and then hung it on that wall. That would be awesome. As with most of our lessons, we encourage you to take ownership of these projects. For example, you might like to omit this wallpaper stage and just paint it on. And that's okay too. It's the artist's choice. So back to wallpapering. Try to get the joints as close as possible. But remember, this is an artwork, not a living room. So there is a little bit of leeway. If you need to overlap to get registration, you can lift the paper while the glue is still wet and tuck it under. I've never laid wallpaper before, but I found the process quite enjoyable. I might go home and wallpaper the living room. Hopefully it's back in vogue again. After you have it all laid up, trim it back to the canvas and smooth it all flat with a soft rag. Good job. So we'll let that dry and then we'll start the next step. Well, my wallpaper is sufficiently dry. And the next step is to seal it. And I'm going to seal it with some Montmartre acrylic matte medium. Now this step isn't really compulsory, but I'd like my artwork to last a while and this will enable me to clean it if need be. So I'm going to apply my medium with the number six long handled gesso brush. So let's get this medium on. Again, squeeze this over the surface and evenly distribute it with the gesso brush. Don't worry if it has a white tinge, it will dry clear. Smooth it off as smooth as you can so there is no predominant brush marks and let that dry. The other sheet attached to the PDF is this outline drawing of the old chair. So we're going to draw that up, but we're going to use a kid's colour crayon to draw our chair up. And we're going to use a kid's colour crayon because it is wax based and it will have no trouble drawing on this shiny surface. So let's draw up our old chair. The chair is fairly simple to draw up and you can feel free to make it as big or small as you feel. Just remember to leave space for your photo. That is, if you're going to do this step. The actual drafting of the chair is not really that important. It is really just a shape that will be painted in. It's just a silhouette type thingy if you like. 
So there again is a fair bit of leeway with this drawing stage. Draw in the legs, and when you're happy with the placement of them, lay in a shadow line. Time now to embellish our chair. And I want this chair to look really pre-loved, old and comfy. So I'm going to apply lots of colours. We'll get to that later. The first step is I'm going to apply some patches. And I'm using my old painting rags to do that. Cut to size and then stuck on the chair with PVA glue. So let's get these patches on. As I said, I'm using my old painting rags. So I lay them up against the drawing and then cut them to size with a pair of scissors. If you're not yet an adult, then make sure you have one around to help you with this step. Place them all into position. You can use old clothes, old towels, anything, as long as it's a bit interesting. When you're happy, draw a profile line around each patch. This way, you will know where to lay in the glue. How many patches you choose is up to you. You might like to just use one, or you may like to cover the entire chair. We then squeeze out some PVA onto each profiled area. Disperse it evenly, and then lay on the patch. Do each patch one at a time until they are all done. The glue needs to be fairly thick so it impregnates the fabric, so a good bond to the canvas is ensured. I'm using the number 15 palette knife to spread out my glue. I've also applied some of the patches at an angle to create a little interest. Now, for the paint, I'm going to use just about every colour I have. So I'm not going to suggest any, it's up to the artist's discretion. I'm going to apply my paint with the number 15 Montmartre palette knife. It's the largest in the range. I'm going to apply the paint directly from a tub of Montmartre dimension paint. And these are great and they're in 250 mil tubs. My chair is going to be very colorful. A real cacophony of colours, if you like. So I don't want the background to clash with this. So I want it to be fairly neutral. So I'm going to use neutral grey. So let's get this background on. This neutral colour should not compete with my colourful chair. It will also look like the type of carpet that you might see in your grandparents' living room. Apply the paint thickly. The marks from the knife will reinforce the look of carpet also, I hope. This is a big knife and I love the amount of paint I can handle with it. Once most of the negative space around the chair is covered, mix a little blue in with the paint and lay in the area under the chair that is in shadow. Now let's apply the paint to the chair. Now, to remain in keeping with the chunky tactile feel of this, I'm applying it with the palette knife. As I said, there is no choice or order of colours to use. It's entirely up to you, the artist. So often artists waffle on about colour groupings, harmonious colour schemes and limited palettes. But in this project, the object of it is to use as many colours as you can. The more they clash, the better. It's actually quite liberating, not having to think about the colours. It's not very often that a work will gain something from tasteless colour choices. But this piece does. Lastly, I lay in some brown for those wooden legs. Well, our chair is finished. And to make this artwork look more homely and quirky, I'm going to create a family portrait in the background. Now, I'm going to use one of my favourite all-time photos, a photo of my mother reading a bedtime story to me when I was a little tacker. So I've scanned that into my scanner and blown it up. 
we're going to make the frame out of the cardboard from a Montmartre canvas pad book. So let's make this frame. Again, this is another scissors warning. So cut the cardboard to the same shape as your photo printout. Then cut another to the same size, cut a window out of it, cover the first full panel with glue, apply your photo, then paint the other frame panel, then stick it face down onto the other one. And voila, a lovely photo frame. To do the frame in gold, I can either use gold paint in the silver series or the dimension series acrylics or gold leaf. But for that real look of gold, I'm going to use the gold leaf. For this, I squeeze out some of the size and brush it onto my frame. I let this tack off and then I take out the gold leaf booklet and lightly press it onto the frame. Once the frame is fully coloured, I use a brush to brush away the loose leaf. It's best to use a nice soft brush to do this, so the surface of the gold is not scratched. I then can put some glue on the back of my frame and apply it to my painting. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you can maybe use some part of it to help you on your journey of artistic self-discovery. And if you do like painting and you're not there now, then come over to Montmartre.net where we have our Montmartre TV section and we have lots more lessons. We also have our Facebook attached and our blogs, as well as our family feed. And if you subscribe to that, well, you get a fun, family project sent out to you each week as well as lots of other goodies. So until next time, remember to keep on painting. See you next time.